it stands to reason that you'd be a better NFL player after playing at such a high level of rugby because when you come back to the NFL, you're wearing pads. You must feel like Superman after that, right? <laughs> I just feel a lot lighter. <laughs> right? I mean, because... It wasn't unnecessary. You know, growing up playing rugby, I'll never get it. But, it, um, you know, it's part of the game. But, um, man, rugby makes you run. It's just, you know, there's a cardiovascular aspect to that game that is just unlike anything else when it comes to the physical sports. Um, you know, so that piece that I have to get myself ready for, you know, football, you run around for six seconds, maybe eight max, and then you rest for 30. So there's, you know, anyone who thinks it's cardiovascular shape in football just hasn't experienced real cardiovascular, you know, strain. So going through this for months and then transitioning to that puts me in a really good place, you know, from, from that physical standpoint. Plus there, there's about two or three rugby moments in a scrum. I imagine that would be unsportsmanlike conduct in the national football league. Right, Nate? Would you agree with that? I don't know, man. I just heard you talking with Derek Henry. I think he'd be just fine in a, in a scrum. But no, <laughs> I, I think uh, it, it's, uh, you know, the scrum's part of it, but in sevens, it's a little more casual. Um, it's one of those speed lightning games. But, yeah, I mean, rugby has its moments. It has its moments. And uh, its physicality. But at the, at the same time, rugby's very, really like, one-on-one. You can't afford to have, you know, 11 guys go tackle the one ball carrier, right? Because they'll just pass it. So you have to be a lot more accurate with your tackling. You have to be a lot better with your defensive shape. You know, you can't just go fly at a guy. So and in a way, that philosophical view of the game, you know, makes it a little bit safer, a little bit less violent because you have to be so accurate in your tackling. Well, before we get to the, your book, Nate Ebner of the New York Giants, I think you're hitting on something. So, so many people have said, you want to take helmet-to-helmet hits out of football, take the helmets off of guys. So I think you kind of hit on that, but, but uh, what, what do you think of that I don't know. idea, I, Nate? Well, I hear you, but at the same time, you know, we're talking philosophy of the game. I mean, football is a very downhill game. Um, in, in a way, you almost need that to protect yourself. A third and one situation with, you know, two back set, I couldn't imagine that fullback lead play without a helmet on. Right. You know what I mean? Um, that would just be crazy to me. I, there, there are aspects of football that, you know, this, the, the equipment is there to protect you, and it definitely needs to be there. But there are also aspects of it that give guys this unnecessary, you know, safety net almost that they feel they feel overly protected and they, they fly into things. You know, you got to ask, would you would you run into something like that if you didn't have those pads on? And I promise you, they'd say no a lot of the time. So those types of aspects where, you know, those open field tackles where guys are just flying and dropping their head, those types of things. Um, I think that's where, in a way, rugby is, has taught me personally um, how to keep my head out of it. But at the same time, I run down on a lot of kickoffs and have to block, you know, protect punt rushes, and, and I'm very thankful for my helmet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.